Lazy Man Apple Cobbler. Hey, this is Sylvie Curry again, Lady of Q, and I'm in my kitchen. Today we're going to be doing a Lazy Man's Apple Cobbler. It's based upon a recipe that I had for a Lazy Man's Peach Cobbler, but instead this time I'm going to substitute apples. Recently, we had an apple harvest of one of our apple trees, and I had apples galore. I made dehydrated apple chips, I made apple pie filling, I made apple jelly, I made apple cider vinegar to ferment, I made, what else, what else, uh, apple pie jam, I just apples galore. And so I ran out of things to do with the apples, so I said, well, hey, do basic and make a cobbler. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to make a Lazy Man's Apple Cobbler. Come on back and we'll get things together. The ingredients today include one cube of butter. We've got a cup of flour, one cup of sugar the apples, we have one cup of milk, two teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and some apple juice that I made from boiling the um, apple skins, cores, and all that down, and so I made my own apple juice. Pies, cobblers, desserts are welcome treats at barbecue, events, 4th of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, and all those events. Um, apples, we know, go very well with pork, so an apple cobbler should be an even more welcome treat at a barbecue event or an outdoor cook. To make this apple cobbler, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna mix our dry ingredients, and I have one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to first whisk all these dry ingredients together just to get them to blend before I add my wet ingredients. As I mentioned, this is a lazy man's cobbler, and the reason for that is we're not making a dough, but we're mostly making a batter, which when we put in the pan is going to serve to rise up through all those nicks and crannies of the apples and make some goody, goody, goody stuff for us. Okay, next I'm going to put in one cup of milk. Careful, my bow's filling up there. And then I'm going to also add a half a cup of apple juice. And I mentioned before that this apple juice was made from the actual skins, pills, core, and all that from the apples as I peeled them. I boiled it down, got it nice and concentrated, and we're going to use that. I'm not looking down there. Get all these bows out of the way. Okay, that's mixed pretty good, I think. Then we're going to pour that over our butter mixture. Get all 
that in there. In the interim, we're also then going to mix our apples with a half a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And since this is going to get messy because I'm going to be mixing by hand, first what I'm going to do is add the cinnamon and nutmeg to the sugar so I get more even distribution of that all throughout my apples. Then we'll pour that all over the apples. Get our hands in there and mix it up so we get that sugary delight all over all my apples. Now, I apologize, I did not measure how many apples I actually had, I used. Uh, we'll just say that we filled a half pan a little less than three quarters full of sliced apples, sliced fresh apples. Okay, now that we got that all mixed, we're going to put our apples on top of our batter, being very careful not to mix it, just layer it on. As I mentioned, as this cooks, that batter is going to seep up and through all my apples and make for a nice dessert. I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes to approximately a little less than an hour. But what we want is for it to be nice and golden brown, bubbly, and syrupy looking. I'll be back with that and I'll show you what our end result is. Our apple cobbler has cooled off now. Now it's time to eat. Let's see what this baby has. Yummy, gooey, gooey. Apple cobbler. Mmm. Ooh, that's good. Mmm. Very, very good. Mmm. 